Confucius say, happiness not consists of having what you want, but wanting what you have. Many times, I believe, we think that what we want will bring us the happiness that we want, but it does not. And so I believe that this saying is true because our thoughts and our feelings created what we have and what we are experiencing. And so every day with every thought and feeling, we are recreating our life. We are recreating it every moment with the thoughts that we think. We learn in life from watching others and from the positive examples, we learn what to do. And from the negative examples, we learn what not to do. But reinvention doesn't always happen just when things aren't going well. Reinvention is happening all of the time. It happens when we're not too rigid to allow it. Sometimes as we grow older, or sometimes we're born that way, we are rigid and we don't want anything to change ever. And that is something that if we're beginning to feel that way or have felt that way, to begin to move away from. Because this is not going to take us to the place where we truly want to be, where we truly feel the happiness that we all deserve. Jim hated his job. He complained about it all of the time. He didn't like anything about it. But when he was fired, he was angry. And, and he was upset. And yet, don't you know that it's the things that we talk about and think about all of the time that creates what happens in our life? Is it surprising that Jim lost his job? Not really, because that's all he's been thinking about. It's all he's been thinking about. And the problem in Jim's case is, is that he didn't know what it was he wanted. He just knew what he didn't want. And so when we, when we take, you know, we say these things over and over, the universe answers our prayer because our thoughts are prayers. And so as Jim said these things, he created it in consciousness and he drew that experience to him because the universe knew he didn't want this job. He didn't like it. And he wanted out. But you know, what we need to do when we're in a situation that is not pleasing to us, we need to know what it is that we do want and begin thinking about that instead. Start thinking about the things we want. Our only problem is, is that sometimes <coughs> We have not explored our options because, in fact, we don't think there are any. Have you ever been in that space in your life when you thought there were no options? Or if you had options, it was between a rock and a hard place? I've, I've been in those situations where I, I thought, you know, I need to get out of this situation, and yet it, getting out of the situation looked as bad as staying in it. And so, there are more options than two, usually. There are usually many, many, many options. And the only thing worse than not having any options is having so many options, you cannot decide which one you want. And I've had that one too. And so have you. I know you have. So there are many paths to re reinventing our lives. And they all start by looking within ourselves. <laughs> We have to look within ourselves, and we have to know ourselves. Jane Polly wanted a new stage in her career, and she wasn't sure exactly how it was going to look, but she began to look at herself and say, okay. Um, she knew sometimes looking at what you don't want helps you to find what you do want, and she knew that she didn't want to be her own boss. She knew that that wasn't something that she wanted. And she, she loved working with a team, and she loved the, the skills that they brought to her skill of interviewing people. 
And so she knew that she didn't want to start her own business or her own nonprofit. And knowing that led her to team up with AARP and the Today Show. As a result of that, she is able to do the thing that she loves, and that is to interview people and to seek out uh, communities and what they're doing and uh, do stories on those things. And so we need to know what we want if we want to find happiness and satisfaction in life. But sometimes we sabotage ourselves, and I'll talk about that later. Create, one of the things that we really want to do when we are looking at creating something new in our life is to create a positive attitude. When we have a positive attitude, we can see the situation as an opportunity for something better. And so we want to do that. We want to see every situation as an opportunity for us to do something that's way better for ourselves. And I'm, uh, I'm in that process right now, as you all know, uh, that I am, I'm looking at what is my next stage of life, what is my second life uh, I have a book called that, my, Your Second Life, and I thought, this, this is it. I'm going into my second life now, maybe third or fourth, really. But, you know, we all go through different stages. We all have different lives that we live, and uh, when one life ends, we, we begin a new one. And, and we have to make sure we're prepared because we don't want to get out there and think, oh, now what am I going to do, you know? Uh, my greatest fear is that I'll sit in front of the TV all day every day. And I could. I could do that. And I don't want to do that. So I have other plans made. And we'll see how they go. And if one of them doesn't work out, we'll try something else. Because it's, you know, I'm really at that stage now that I can do that. And I can, and I can, you know, I have, I have lots of options. So it's pretty exciting. And this goes, uh, this goes for all kinds of things. First, you need to do something about finding something that holds interest for you. And this means um, many things to many different people. For one person, it might be finding a meaningful relationship or for uh, any other change that you want. Volunteering is often a path to making a meaningful career change. You never know what, what is going to lead you to the next step. It may not be the step you want, but it may be leading you to the next step of what you want. And so by helping someone else, you're also going to gain something for yourself. And some of the things you may gain is experience, uh, contacts, and maybe even something to put on your resume. And it may be even lead to a long-term job if that's what you're looking for. So create a vision for your future. And, and to do that sometimes takes time. So give yourself time. You know, put yourself in your own appointment book. Have you ever done that? Have you ever found that you're so busy you don't have time for you? And so you, you write yourself down, you know, from two to four. That's my time. That's my time that I'm going to sit and I'm going to be still. And we're just, I'm just going to close my eyes and imagine the people, the places or situations that, that I want to attract into my life. And to see also those situations, those people, whatever it may be, that you're going to have to release from your life. Sometimes uh, that is the case. And, and uh, I don't know of any people I want to release from my life right now. But I know that as I move on, I will find more people to be in my life. So that's... That's something that I'm, I'm willing and open to look at. So whether, you know, imagine that future that you want, whether it's simply a feeling, a group of people, or a situation such as a wonderful new job, or a relationship, or a new home, or whatever it may be for you. And imagine, imagine how it's going to be in that new place. You know, get excited. This is a time to really get excited, to really look at this, to look at your life and look at what can be. Because what can be can be really quite wonderful, really quite wonderful. Imagine what it's going to be like in this new place. 
And picture the sun coming up behind your future and this warm glow of light on your face. And I want to tell you that we have one of the most wonderful tools right here for you to do this. And that is our labyrinth that's out back. I have been going out, I, I often, when I have a class or when I have a meeting or something in the evening, I stay through, I don't go home and then come back. So I stay here, but I get to the point that I can't sit at my desk any longer. So I will go out and uh, walk the labyrinth. And I usually go in with a question, and so you could do that, whatever that question may be. How, you know, how does, what is it that I'm looking for now in my life? What is it that, that excites me and really makes me uh, want to uh, move forward? And as you walk into the labyrinth, just, you know, gently place that in your mind. And as you walk, and when you finally reach the center, um, one of the things I do is I turn to all four directions and do something, say something, whatever it is. But in this case, if you turn to the east, which is in that direction, you, you would um, look at that as, as your past and give thanks for that and to bless it and to know that, you know, everything that has gone on in your life until now has brought you to this moment to this very point in your life where anything can happen, where anything is possible. And, and when you reach that point, you, you look at it and you say, thank you, God. You know, thank you, Spirit, that you have moved and worked through me and brought me to this point in my life, and I am so very grateful. I'm so very grateful for that. And then turn to the West. And look at your new future that you're getting ready to walk into. And just bless that and know that that is going to be a bright, wonderful future. And then begin to walk out of the labyrinth. And as you walk out of the labyrinth, believe that you are walking into your future. For indeed you are. You truly are walking into your future, into that new place that you've been searching for. And, you know, it's not that what you left is bad. It just means that the future's going to be different. And, and if you've played your cards right, it's going to be a great future. If you've really thought those thoughts and if you've really, you really know what it is you're looking for, you know, you feel that gratitude beginning to well up in yourself as you walk and imagine yourself. <coughs> walking into the future. Another technique that I find very, very, very helpful is to write about your new invention. Imagine a scene from it, or write about how you're going to play out that scene. Write it any way that really feels good to you. Write it um, about like where you're living. And what do you do in the mornings? And what do you do in the afternoons and the evenings? Who are your friends? And what do you spend your days doing? And then continue writing as long as this exercise feels invigorating and exciting. And keep your writing somewhere where you'll look at it occasionally. You know, kind of pick it up and look at it and feel free to add to it. It's a wonderful technique to do. Another thing you can do is surround yourself with visual reminders of the life you'd like to create. And we sometimes call that an image book or a, um, uh, what is vision that board? board? Vision board. A vision board. We used to call them treasure maps too. And um, so and you can see, time rich with knowledge, income streams. I, I always put in, in the middle, I always put in the divine order because <laughs> I don't want any of those things to come as a result of something I don't want. So I always put everything, you know, all things in divine order. And so uh, put those objects or the images in this field uh, someplace where you can look at them every day. And if it's a house you want, put a picture of the house that looks similar to what you would like to have. And um, anything that reminds you 
of what this kind of life is going to look like for you. And if it's a rewarding relationship you want, write down all of the characteristics that you're looking for. And then make a list of all of the things that you have to give in return. This is something we usually forget. We know what we want, but what do we have to give? And that's a very important question to ask ourselves. What do I have to give? And so write down all of those things because you have many wonderful things to give. And now, when you do this, you um, have a vision for your future. And so once you have this vision for your future, you break it up into workable tasks. And one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm making a list of all of the things that I need to do to get ready to uh, spend the winter in Florida. And so I'm writing all of those things down, and as I finish one, I check them off. And... Uh, I keep coming up with more and more and more things. I don't know if I'm going to have time. I might have to spend the winter here just getting them all done. <laughs> but um, when do you, you know, and put down when you need to do them. Make sure that you, you put a date on them so that everything gets done at the time that you need them done. Um, so uh, look at every day as you create your vision. Um, are you going to need to look for work, uh, meet new people, search for a place to live in your chosen town? Uh, make it specific. Make a list of everything you need to do and a schedule for when you do it. And so as you do this, you're going to find that your commitment to stay with it is a little stronger. It's a little stronger every day. And so... Um, Make sure that you do a little something every day. Every day, go back to the vision of your walking towards the future. Remember that in your mind. And if you've actually done it, it'll be very vivid in your mind of walking into the future. Every morning or evening, close your eyes and see yourself walking towards your dreams. And reconnect with why you're moving toward this new possibility in your life. The thing that I found most helpful is to continue to do what is in front of you while you're doing this work. It's important for you not to get caught up and think, well, I just need to leave everything I'm doing right now and, and you know, just work on this. Um, I, I found that it's a good way to let your life fall apart if that happens. Uh, some people have done it and been, done it successfully, but for me, it seems like what I need to do is do what's in front of me now, but also at the same time, I'm walking toward my dreams and I'm connecting with them. And so as you do this, you, you're walking into new possibilities. And, um, you know, know that we'll make some mistakes along the way. And that's okay. We all make mistakes and uh, make it okay. Make it okay to say, okay, that, that didn't quite work out the way I had intended, but um, I'm still on, on the right path, and I'm, you know, if I've made a side trip, now I'm coming back to the, to the way I, that I really want to come. So, um, you know, we can always, you know, straighten our course as we go and still reach our destination. I uh, talked to... Uh, a friend of mine this week who's a psychologist, and I said, do you have any tips for my, for my talk this week? And uh, she said, well, as a matter of fact, I have this great book, and the book is called Reinventing Your Life, The Breakthrough Program to End Negative Behavior and Feel Great Again. And it's by Young and Costco, Costco PhD. Uh, they're both PhDs. And they developed this new therapy, and there's, there's something that, that we all have to a degree of, of uh, perhaps something that we picked up in our childhood, perhaps something that we lived with. Some of us had, had more um, uh, dysfunctional childhoods than others, and so uh, as a result of that, we have things that we do over and over again in an endless loop that... Um, that we can't seem to escape from. 
uh, for example, uh, and a person will marry an alcoholic over and over and over again, or or you know be involved with with someone uh, because perhaps their mother or their father was an alcoholic, and so so and and then another person will go totally the other way. You just never know how it's going to affect one person or another. Or perhaps they had a neglected childhood, a childhood where they were not given a, the, the kind of attention and love and nurturing that they needed. So they go out and they, they find a partner that's, that's, that does not nurture them, does not care for them and love them in the way they need to be loved. And so when this happens, we, we, we may do this over and over again, and the reason we do this is because we are drawn to something that we are familiar with. We become, we're very familiar with it, so we're just drawn to it. And you can think of lots of different things. I found myself a couple of times in this book, it was downright scary. But, um, but, I, but, it, but, but I realized that there's help. You know, there's, there's, there's something that we can do about about that and change it and I realized that over time I have changed them somewhat so you probably have too you have you've done things that have said okay you know I've, I've done this one too many times it's time for me to do something new it's time for me to do something different and and when we do this we find that you know, doors open up. Now, we may not have the drama and the excitement and the passion that is coming from these other things that we do over and over again, but we will find a sense of peace and well-being and calm and love in our lives that we never felt before. And so, um, I would suggest that uh, this is a good book. If, you know, if you want to try doing it yourself, it's, it's based on real science, really good science. It's not uh, pop psychology. And, um, and, and as you do the exercises, you, you, you can do better if, you, if you're really, really stuck. And we all get stuck at some point in our lives. You know, sometimes we need to go talk to a professional about, about it. So reinvention is neither easy nor smooth. Don't expect it just to flow by. It can, and it's really wonderful when it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So don't be discouraged if it doesn't. It, it, often we encounter resistance, and we'll encounter resistance from inside of ourselves as well as from outside. You know, people will say, why are you doing this? You know, are you nuts? And uh, sometimes we think maybe we are. But don't lose your dream. Don't lose it. Because what is behind it is a divine urge. A divine urge that is urging you to do something different. And so um, we often struggle with limiting beliefs or stories about ourselves, because we all have our story, you know. And our story may be true, and it may not be exactly true. But um, those stories will hold us back from what we want to do in our lives. If there's one way to keep your compass pointed to this new life, even in the midst of any resistance or struggles you may encounter on your path. And each time you find yourself slipping into old habits, isolating yourself, making excuses not to look for work or to find the right partner or procrastinating on a task that might help you advance in the right direction, don't bother wondering why you're doing it or beating yourself up. We, we are very, very good at beating ourselves up. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just ask yourself this one, one simple question. What do I in this moment to keep moving forward? What do I do in this moment to keep moving forward? And maybe it's think a new thought. Maybe it's as simple as that. Then no matter what you feel in the moment, lonely, self-critical, tired, lazy, or disappointed, do something to maintain momentum 
even if it's one small thing. There's an old adage that says that true courage isn't about not feeling fear. It's about feeling fear and acting anyway. Choose courage instead of letting your fear choose your, your future for you. Sometimes fear can be pretty overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. Perhaps your life is really pretty good right now in most areas, and I hope that that's the case. But if you have some area in your life that needs improvement, um, begin to work on that. Begin to find out exactly what that is and begin to work on it. Determine specifically what areas of your life need changing. Perhaps you need a shift in the way you're thinking, um, the way you relate to other people. It's possible that you may need to adjust a personal character flaw that you might have or that you may need some uh, external inspiration. Maybe you need to talk to somebody about your ideas, someone that you know will be very supportive. Make changes in your external environment, and that, that can assist you in the way you live your life by allowing your creative impulses to flow. You know, we need to step out of our comfort zone every once in a while in order to let our creativity out to do something just a little different. If you're, you know, if you do one thing, do something else. Try, try a, a craft. If you're a cook and you, or a chef and you love, you know, you love that, that's a part of what you, your, your life is about is cooking and, and nurturing other people, then, then maybe you might like to try something a little different. Not that you're gonna give up cooking, it's just that you may, as trying something else, bring more creativity into your life. So determine those areas and, and begin to work with them. Give yourself plenty of time to create, to recreate your view of yourself and your world. You know, we all have an idea of what the world is like and what the world should be like. And sometimes we're not willing to give that up. Sometimes we want it to stay exactly the way we think it should be. And we even see it through those colored glasses that show us the world in a way that, that we feel it should be. And if we do that all of the time and we never take a look outside of our little world, uh, we, we won't grow. We will not be able to change. Although you may be anxious to be wiser and a more capable person, you may need to relax a bit and not take yourself so seriously. You know, we all take ourselves very seriously sometimes. And, and that's a part of our problem. And I've found that the more I laugh, and the more I laugh at myself, the freer I become. And so as you become free in your life, as you laugh, as you find things that are humorous in your life, um, you know, just let go and, and, and have a good laugh on whatever is happening. If you're finding trouble doing that, um, go to the comedy channel. Or, you know, sometimes we need a kickstart on laughter. Um, we used to do a class that uh, we would uh, just say, okay, start to laugh now. And we go, ha, 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 ha. Did we feel funny? No. Did anything seem funny to us? No. But we started to laugh. Well, the more we laughed, the funnier it got. And so, you know, if you found out you haven't laughed today, it's, it's really good to, you know, for your body. Your body is, you know, responds extremely well to laughter. Accentuate, accentuate your attitudes. Everyone is good at something. I mean attributes. I, I knew that didn't sound right. <laughs> Accentuate your attributes. You have wonderful attributes. You all have wonderful attributes. You all have something to give. You all have something that you're very good at. You have good, some good qualities, uh, talents that you have. And even though you think you don't have many, if you start to write them down, you find you have a whole lot. And um, I, I heard, an, heard a piece of a, a thing on NPR this week about a, um, I'm not even sure what the agency's name is, but there's an agency in town that helps people who have been out of work for some time 
to uh, prepare themselves for employment and to help them find employment. And they had a, a man on there who had been in prison for five years. Uh, for He was a felon, and he had his, what he had always done was sell drugs. And they took him in. He wanted to change his life. He, he felt like there was something better for him in life than what he'd been doing. And so he went there, and uh, they, they sat him down, and, and, and they found out what he had that was really good traits for him. And one of them was his attention to detail. He, was, he, he really could pay attention to detail. And so as, you know, they were looking for jobs for him, they, they looked for things that had detail. And another thing that he, he was very good at was, was noticing what's happening all around him. Well, you know, if you're selling drugs, you're looking for them. <laughs> you know, you're always looking. You're always looking to see if somebody's watching, you know. So, so they found a job for him that um, he was basically supervising this food processing plant. And he needed to know what was going on everywhere. And he needed to be very certain that things were done exactly right. And, and done according to the rules, and so he needed to pay attention. And this company is now sending him to uh, Chicago for training, additional training. He's already had one um, promotion, and they've sent him for additional training. They're sending him for additional training. And he is just delightful to hear on the radio and uh, doing very well. And so, you know, if, if someone who has had this kind of life can reinvent themselves, can't we? Can't we do that too? Can't we change the situations in our life? Or at least if we can't change them, know that it's time to leave them and, and to move on to something else. And so, one of the things that, that comes right along with this is developing self-confidence. And maybe we felt beaten down by life, and we feel like we're not good enough for whatever reason we've got that we've come to this conclusion, throw that conclusion out. And uh, continuously encourage yourself to do better. Uh, sometimes it may be necessary to push ourselves beyond our perceived limits. And when we do this, we, we find out that, that maybe there's more out there than right here that we don't have to stay in this box, that perhaps there's way more in the world for us than that. And so we push ourselves beyond those perceived limits and in certain situations, you know, in order to see just how far we can go, just how much we can do and, and get rid of those limits that we've placed upon ourselves. So that's, that's another thing that we want to look at when we're reinventing ourselves. And another is to take care of yourself in a multitude of ways. Take care of yourself spiritually. Make sure you spend time in quiet contemplation and meditation. Read inspiring books. Go to inspiring messages. Um, do the things that are going to lift you up and make you feel better about yourself. And if you're in trouble in a certain area, seek help, but realize that you have to be careful about who you seek help from, because not everyone has your best interests at heart. So you go to that person that you know accepts and loves you unconditionally. Extend your positive vibes to everyone you know. As you change, as you grow, as you become more and more um, aware of yourself and, and more happy and doing the things that you love, um, share that love. Share it with everyone you meet. And, and give people, you know, an, an opportunity and help in becoming and, and, and reaching center stage themselves because that journey is very important to them to be able to have someone mentoring them. And, and chances are when you've done this work, you've had someone helping you, mentoring you, cheering you on. And so here's, here's 
something that we want to do, is we want to reach out. And uh, I'd just like to do a little postscript on, on Jim, who lost his job in the very beginning. Uh, Jim had always loved to cook. It was, it was his real passion. That was what he looked forward to all day, is, is cooking when he got home. And so he decided that what he really, really wanted to do, after he took some time to really look for it, is he decided he wanted to be a chef. And so he went to school to learn to be a chef, and uh, that's what he's doing today. So he's, he's very happy in his new vocation, and, uh, and you know, change is possible. It's change, change is possible for all of us. And we, can, and we can invent ourselves into being the very best and the very most that we can be. And you can do it. I know you can. God bless you. And have a wonderful life to come. It's starting right now. Thank you.